brother Nelson, D up with us. The word of God. Praise the Lord. God bless you all. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Thank you for inviting me. <laughs> we glorify your name, Father yes. God. Praise be to God. Let me present myself real quick. Let's pray real quick. Father thank God, God, I thank you. Thank you, Lord. I thank you for thank the opportunity. You. Like always, it is an honor and a privilege. The Spirit of God, help me. Help thank me, Lord. Put the word out like you intended it. Father, I ask that you open the hearts and minds of our youth. That they can take this word and make a change in their lives, just like it did to me. Yes, Lord. I thank you, Heavenly Father, for the opportunity once again. We worship you, Lord. In the holy name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. 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 I am always nervous, so bear with me. Praise be to God. We glorify your name. Let's get right into the word. As you see the title, all I have. I'm working on the visual thing. I mean, we have the resources, so why not use them? Amen. Yes. Amen. So let's go to the Word of God. Mark 14, verses 3 and 9. Give me a big amen when you have it, and we'll kick it. We get it going. If you want to praise, praise. Mark 14. Three to nine. We glorify your name, Father God. Glorify your Lord Jesus. Name. Ready? Amen. Well, God bless you, my brother. Let us read in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. While he was in Bethany, reclining at the table in the home of Simon, the leper. A woman came with an alabaster jar of very expensive perfume made of pure nard. She broke the jar. Uh -huh, my, my fan got me. She broke the jar and, and poured the perfume on his head. Some of those present were saying indignantly to one another, why this waste of perfume? It could have been sold for more than a year's wages, and that money given to the poor, and they rebuked her harshly. Leave her alone, said Jesus. Why are you bothering her? She has done a beautiful thing to me. The poor you will always have with you, and you can help them anytime you want. But you will not always have me. She did what she could. Oh my God. We glorify your name, my Lord Jesus. She pure perfume on my body beforehand to prepare me for my burial. Truly I tell you, wherever the gospel is preached throughout the world, what she has done will also be told in memory of her. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. We glorify your name, Lord Jesus. All I have. I want to be honest, man. This message just beat me up. I've been holding it for like two or three weeks now, and I want to give God all I have. Praise God. If you read the story, she took a jar of expensive perfume. Now, let me tell you, let me give you a little background. She's, she is Mary, uh, the sister of Martha, and Lazarus, the one that God resurrect, uh, Jesus resurrected. Mm -hmm. You find that in the book of John 12. When, it, when the, the book of John actually says the name. The God that said, well, why is she spending this perfume was uh, Judas. And it says that the perfume is a like one year's wages. So that's about 300 denarii. That was the coin back then. And I calculated if it's one year wages in an average American home, it's about $57,000. That she cracked open the jar and poured it all on Jesus. So she gave all that she had. Amen? Amen. What a beautiful thing. Yes. Now I want to talk to you about giving it all to God, to Jesus. Praise God. And that, that what she did was a sign of worship, Amen. an act of worship. See, worship is not only singing and praising God. Worship is your prayer life. You're a long time with Jesus. God. 
your tithes and offerings. To put it very simple, worship is the act of service to the Lord. So even if you have the job of cleaning the church, that's worship. The worship to you, singing, the prayer, that's all worship. So like I said, I, I read this and I'm like, yo, I want to give more to God. Yeah. That's why I show up on Wednesdays now and I've been luck. Mm -hmm. I was missing a lot. I didn't know how, you know, how powerful it is to come on a Wednesday. You know, because we get filled up on Sunday. Bye-bye. You know, five days down the road, it's like, I mean, but Wednesday you get that extra boost. Mm -hmm. And it's been a blessing ever since. And I said, God, because there's no more excuses this year. You know that. Amen. Amen. So I have no excuses not to come Wednesday. So I said, God, I'm going to just, I'm going to, I'm going to give it all. And since that first Wednesday that I came, I just felt it, man. I just want to let it all out. Praise God. Praise and I understand God. that not everybody's feeling what I feel with God and my love to him. I, I get that. But I want you to change your minds today to live for God, mm -hmm. to live for Jesus, mm -hmm. and give it all you have. Yes. Amen? Yes. yes. Amen. So I want to touch on something. I don't want to go too crazy on it. This part here. I kind of fought with it. I wasn't even going to talk because I know you're a younger crowd. But something just kept bothering me. And I got to talk about it. How many work here? Jobs, get paid. Okay. So I know I'm going you know, I got some people on the hook. So I want to talk about tithes and offerings. I want to talk about finances right now. And I was worried to talk about this. One, that discourages a lot of people from church. I know a person that came to this church once and they were selling some tickets for some concert and the, and the lady just kept pushing and pushing and pushing and this is from upstairs. And she said, I'm not going back. All they want is money. Mm -hmm. Understand? So we gotta be careful. So I wanna touch lightly. But understand that tithes and offerings are very important. Yes. Alright? You might not you never heard it, nobody told you, but this fan these lights, they got to get paid somehow. And it's through our tithes and offerings. And that is a sign of worship also. So for those that work, I hope you're giving your tithes and offerings. Now, many of you did not raise your hand. Y'all don't work, right? Can I? The ones that don't work? Hands, hands. Those that don't work. Hands, 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 hands. Oh, my God. Are we here today? So, so. I know you don't work, but I know when those sneakers come out, you got your mom. And you get that, right? I know you get that little, you know, that chain, there's a couple of dollars to go to school, right? So why not separate a little bit from God? Yes. God has given you so much, why not separate a bit? Mm -hmm. Praise be to God. In this church, we take care of missionaries. We do missions. I don't know if you knew that. And every Sunday, the last Sunday every month, we collect an offering just for them. I think we're taking care of like four now. Maybe more. Maybe more. By the way, that's an alabaster jar. My, my, uh, my guy here moved me too fast. But <laughs> But understand what I'm trying to say. It is very important. And I want you to grow with good habits. Amen. That's all I'm trying to do. I'm not trying to point fingers. I'm not saying you're cheap. Cheap. <laughs> but it's the truth. It is very important. <clears throat> Tithes and offerings, it is connected to worship also. Amen? Amen. Uh, now, some of you might say, but I don't have enough. Or I don't have many. I don't have Whatever you have, whatever you have, believe me, God is not looking for the, for the amount. In Mark 12, write it down, and you're writing down, 41 to 44, and I'll tell you the story real quick. There was a widow, and he sat down opposite of the temple treasury and began watching how the people were putting money into the treasury. And many rich people were putting large sums. A poor widow came and put in two small copper coins which amount to a limit. Calling his disciples to him, he said to them, I assure you, and most solemnly said to, say to you, this poor widow put 
more than all the contributors to the treasury. For they all contributed for their sur surplus, but she, from her poverty, put all she had, all she had to live on. The widow put all she had to God. So don't tell me I don't have, don't I know. Come on. Set a goal. You know what? Let me put a dollar here, a dollar there, a dollar there, a dollar there. It helps. Even if it's for us too. We have to come up with raffles and all these things so you can bring a dollar. I'm talking, I'm, and I'm sorry to say it that way. But why, why isn't God touch your heart to come willingly to give up? It's just, like I said, I don't want to dig deep in this, but I just, I want you to get good habits. Amen. Because you're, you're missing out on, on a blessing. Yes. You're, you're the one missing out. I'm going to be honest with you. We can debate on, on the tithes and offerings, and that was for the law, and we are on the grace and all of this, and we can get into all that. But if we use the scripture for some things, how can we not use them for others? Praise God. Amen? Amen? Yes. Are you here with me today? Yes. Let's go to Malachi. Father God. Malachi 3. From 8 to 11, I'm going to read it. Uh, listen to what God says to the people of Israel. Will a mere mortal rob God? Yet you rob me. But you ask, how are we robbing you? in tithes and offerings. You are under a curse, your whole nation, because you are robbing me. Bring the whole tithe into the storehouse that there may be food in my house. Ah, uh, here we go. Here's the blessing. Test me in this, says the Lord Almighty. And I see if I will not throw open the floodgates of heaven and pour out so much blessing that there will not be room enough to store it. Oh, Father God. Praise be to God. I will prevent pests from devouring your crops, and the vines in your fields will not drop their fruit before it is ripe, says the Lord Almighty. I will read that last again because that's where it hits me so hard. He said, I will prevent the pests from devouring your crops. He will protect your finances. Yeah. You're missing out on the blessing. And I understand you're young and probably nobody has told it to you this way. But I was bothered. I was bothered when we, we, we got to come up with gimmicks. You know, I mean, just to get a little fun for the youth. Understand that, you know, the cakes and all of that, 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 that you know, somebody's got to pay for But look at us. We're 30 deep, 40 deep at some times. How, how much can we be doing? And we can push it further than that. Praise God. Amen? Yes, Amen. Amen. Done with the finances. <laughs> oh, Father God. Uh, well, many here are missing the blessing. I said it, right? Sometimes it's out of ignorance because you didn't know. And sometimes it's just willingly. You just don't care. It's not in you. So I, I would say dig deep if you didn't even have any better thought. Like, nah, they got enough. Amen? Let's move up. <laughs> Whether it be your finances, but most importantly, your spiritual life, you're missing on blessings. Ephesians 1, from 3 to 10, speaks about a lot of blessings. It's like five of them, so I'm going to paraphrase. It says, one of the, the spiritual blessings is that we have been chosen. We have been predestined. That means before he even made the earth, he already thought of us. Amen. Before he knew, he knew that man was going to turn on him. He chose you, my brother, my sister. Yes. That is the blessings, the spiritual blessings. See, because we get blessings kind of confused. We think it's material things, and there's a lot of garbage out there telling you all this material stuff, and you know what I mean, and, and give me one, I'll give you ten. I know you probably heard it. That doesn't work that way. If I give him one, I'm minus one. But he's going to take care of you yes. in other different ways. Yes. Yes. I mean, so don't let nobody fool you that if you give a hundred, you're going to get a thousand. I mean, it's no way. It's not in scripture. Amen. But he will open the doors for you if you yes. need something. Amen. Wow. And I want to remind you that sometimes God closes doors also. Yes. Yes. So stop trying to break in through those doors. Because you're hard. -headed. We are hard. -headed. I'm hard. -headed. Sometimes he closes doors for a reason. Yes. Amen. Amen. 
He adopted us. He made us. He brought us to his family. Now we call sons of God. What a beautiful thing. And him we have redemption. He gives us wisdom. He let us know all the mysteries. See, that's all the spiritual blessings that we miss out on. Because we don't read our word. We don't do what we're supposed to do. Amen? Amen. Now, let's get back to the story. I just, I just wanted to get that out there. It was so hard. Praise God. Amen. Yeah. So Mary, Jesus said she did what she could. That's why I said she gave it all. All I have. Uh, I just put the alabaster jar. And it says that she broke the alabaster jar. Now I was thinking, listen, and I'm how I'll be honest. Sometimes when you read scripture, you can get into a rabbit hole and it just becomes. Because I was trying to figure out if this Mary is Mary Magdalene. And, and you know, it just became. And you've got a hundred people that will tell you yes. And a hundred people no. And I was like this and like that. And then all of a sudden, the is like, just focus on the story. Because in John, it says that she, that she anointed his feet. And this one, she said, it says the head. So it's like, just focus on the story. Amen? So she broke open an alabaster jar. And like I told you, a year's work. But I don't think she smashed it because it would have been done. I think she just cracked it open that it will never be able to see it. And she dumped it all on Jesus. <laughs> oh, wow. I don't know if you got it. But I want to dump it all over Jesus. Amen. My God. Thank you, Lord. Now, Mary, this is not her first running with the Lord. Go to Luke 10, 38, 42. And I'm sorry I'll give you a lot of verses today. But I just want I, I want to put all this together. Luke 10, 38 to 42. Now while they were on the way, Jesus entered a village called Bethany. And a woman named Martha walked her into her home. She had a sister named Mary who seated herself at the Lord's feet and was continually listening to his teaching. But Martha was very busy and distracted with all of her serving responsibilities. And she approached him and said, Lord, is it of no concern to you that my sister has left me to do the serving alone? Tell her to help me and do her part. But the Lord replied to her, listen to this, Martha, Martha. You are worried and bothered and anxious about so many things, but only one thing is necessary. For Mary has chosen the good part, that which is to her advantage, which will not be taken away from her. So in a different story, before all of this happened, Jesus was at their house, and she was right at his feet. While he was teaching, Mary was at his feet. And maybe you read that, and you're like, okay, but understand Jewish culture. Mm -hmm. The men were separated. Men spoke and women were on the side. See, sometimes you're going to have to break the norm. Mm -hmm. oh, my. Praise God. Glory be to God. Yes, amen. Sometimes you're going to have to go against. Yes. Oh, my God. Wow. See, because in their customs, the way they did things, that was a no-no. But she was there and she was at his feet. The same thing when she broke the, the jar open. They were having dinner, so it, it wasn't at her place to step in. But she, you know what? Because it had to be the Spirit of God to tell her to do something like that. So she was obedient. And what she did, it was preparing him for the burial, it says. Right? We go back to that to the scripture. See, obedience, that's a sign of worship. Yes, it is. You understand what I'm trying to say? Amen. Meanwhile, she was, you know, her sister was running up and down, doing this, doing it there, make sure the little uh, pigs in a blanket are ready to go. Mm -hmm. Not that he need none of that. They're kosher. <laughs> 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 but I understand, you know, she was getting the Cheetos ready. <laughs> that damn is from the Super Bowl. Yeah. <laughs> but she was at his feet. I want you to choose <coughs> Jesus. Sometimes we get carried away with the day-to-day -day thing. We're more worried about the day-to-day -day things and serving and doing this and work and school mm -hmm. and all that is necessary. But remember to get back and yes. get close to Jesus. Yeah. Oh, Praise be to God. And maybe you say that, you know, like I was talking about earlier, you know, maybe I don't have maybe I don't have anything of value to give that. 
But I am sure, and scripture tells me that everybody in this room has a gift. Amen. And there is value in your life. Yes. And I get it, man. Many of you don't want to be here. You know, hopefully it's just a few. But it's a reality. Unfortunately. But there is value in your life. Yes, there is. Amen. Matthew 6, 26 says, Look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns. And yet, your heavenly Father keeps feeding them. Are you not worth much more than they? Are you not worth much more than they? You're valuable to God. Yes. Give it all. Yes. Give it all to Him. Lay it down. You know, Wednesday, Friday, Sunday, that's not enough. I'm sorry. You know, you come on Fridays, you think, oh, yeah, and I mean, Sundays you don't show up. Wednesdays, hey, and I was one of those. I'm speaking about myself. It's not enough. It's an everyday thing. It's an everyday thing that I want to go to God. An everyday thing I want to give it all to Him. Yes. Every day. Praise be to God. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Why not go all in for God? He laid the he did he did the ultimate sacrifice. Are you not grateful for that? And you don't take that serious enough? He died for your sins. He died so you won't go to the lake of fire. Yeah, you walk around like it's all, you know, it's just another day in church. Oh my God. Praise be to God. Look. I'm just here to encourage you. Yes. I want to help you. And maybe I'm not talking to nobody in this room. But maybe I am talking to a lot of people. Amen. Amen. We thank you, Lord. Me and Dave was talking about this, and I didn't know how to say it, and that's how we got confused on the title, but in a poker game, if you play Texas Hold'em, you hope you're not playing Texas Hold'em for money. There's a thing called when you're betting, I go all in. Mm -hmm. So that means that you think you have the best hand, and you're you're ready to you you want to risk everything that you have. I'm all in. And people get scared sometimes. Oh, what does he have? <laughs> See, but it's still a game. It's still odds. You're still running the numbers. Mm -hmm. When you go all in for God, come on. Come on. See, in a game of poker, it's me against Monique. And I'm all in. She might go all in, but it's going to be one woman. When you go all in for God, praise be to God. Yes, amen. amen. Everybody wins. Yes. Glory. He's not going to let you down. Glory. And you have to go all in. See, many of us here are not going all in. Many of us have given just a little bit. And it's sad. Maybe it's not none of you. I'm part of talking to people that I know that I'm going to send this video to. But we have to go all in for God. Let's stop playing around. Let's stop playing with the little. My favorite saying, let's stop giving God crumbs, man. Mm -hmm. God deserves better than that. Mm -hmm. God did so much for me that I am so grateful. I understand Julio now. Uh, you see me now. I'm fired up, man. Something changing. Amen. That's because I'm grateful for him. I'm grateful because my family is restored. I'm grateful for all the things that he's done. My job, everything's running smooth. But sometimes, I, you know, I just I do the job and be crazy sometimes. But you know what I mean? I put it in God's hands. When I get to the job, I start praying. And I pray for the dude. Amen. Huh? Let's go all in for God. What is the of God? Yes. Amen. Amen. Yes. Unfortunately, man, we're contaminated. This is how it came down. We're contaminated with the world. We mention it over and over again, but nothing happens. There are many idols in our lives that are hindering our walk, but yet we don't do nothing about it. We can preach, it's been a year, two years now, and we're preaching and we say the same thing and nothing changes in your life. That's got to stop. And don't get me wrong, I'll come next time and I'll say it again. Yes. I don't have an issue. Until you get it or you don't get it. 
That's between you and God. But I have a responsibility. And I told you, I'm all in for you guys. I am. <laughs> now I feel the burden sometimes. But it's true. We're playing the games out there. We, we, you know what I mean? With, with that, I don't know how you say the word. Oh my God, Father. Is it dabbling? Dabbling? With the world too much. And if you look at the definition, it's, you know, experimenting. It's, it's, it's in the law. Another definition says, you know, you're still playing with water. <laughs> Wetting your feet a little. Oh my God. Stop justifying your sins. Separate yourself from the world. Huh. Stop getting contaminated with the world. See, we like to justify our sin. Oh, it's not bad. God knows my heart. It's not in the Bible. But you know it's wrong. Yes. <laughs> Come on. Come on. You know what? You know, it, it, it breaks my heart. You know. We were sitting watching Super Bowl. And many people were doing their thing, you know, I know not everybody was paying attention to the game as well. But when that halftime show kicked up. Oh, man, I say? I gotta say. Say. When that halftime show kicked up, all eyes. Not all eyes. I'm just, you know, the majority. All eyes. Lips moving. I stepped to one brother that I love him, but I'm just saying it just, uh, you know. And he apologized. So you know it's not right. Right? But that was also, right? I'm down. I used to be down with the G unit and all that. But how can I be that way now? How can I be saying it's nothing but a G thing? I'm not no gangster. You understand? Yeah. But to you, it's, it's a joke. To you, it's like, oh, no, it's all right. It's lyrics. Lyrics that talk about guns and popping pills and killing people. Where's the sons of God here? And yet we put our all our attention to that. And yet, today worship started, and it was happening. That Friday, I think it was last Friday, they had prayer, and the whole downstate cried, right? Lord, Father God, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Friday they had prayer, but downstairs was packed. Did anybody go up there? And they said, let me fill my cup up. Mm -hmm. See, what, what game are we playing here? And I say it with all the love in the world. Because I've been through all that. Like I told you, I'm on the ride home, man. We fell so many times, I fell so many times that nobody told me. Nobody pushed me. And I'm here, I'll push you all the way. Right? Yeah. But I can lead you to the water. I can't make you drink. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's between you and God. Amen? Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Yes. But we, like I said, we're contaminated. And, and you, keep, you keep fighting. No, you know what I mean? No, it's, it's okay. It's only once in a while. Me and Isaac had this conversation about music all the whole time. I'm trying to get them off that. I told them I started with instrumentals. Instrumentals still help me out. But I know the lyrics, so I'm still putting lyrics into the <laughs> instrumentals so it didn't work out. <laughs> but now I fell in love with worship. Jesus. Now I fell in love with worship. Now I just don't want nothing to do with the world. I don't want to contaminate myself. You know why? Because you contaminate yourself, and then you're going to fall. Where's the end? Dale, will you do me a favor? I want to tell you something. I want to do something. Can you get me toilet water? Seriously. You cup or something? I got two cups. Let's <laughs> <laughs> gloves. Not too much. Remove your Flush. Don't flush. If there's something there, bring it. I got fresh water. Fresh water. Don't go. Don't leave me. Don't leave me. I got fresh water. Fresh water. This is us. Supposed to be. A tiger. Christians. Supposed to be pure. Separate ourselves. Chosen nation. The priesthood. Wait till that toilet water comes. You have to separate yourself. 
stop contaminating yourself. And I, I, just, I just brought this up because many of you still are justifying what you're doing. I hope these things don't break on me. <laughs> cursing my brothers and sisters this should not be can both fresh water and salt water flow from the same spring my brothers and sisters can a fig tree bear olives or a grapevine bear figs neither can a salt spring produce fresh water many of you are carrying two types of water many of you are walking like this On Wednesdays, on Fridays is good, on Sundays is good, but during the other days, let's stop playing games. Honestly. Whatever it is, whatever is holding you back, whatever is hindering you, whatever you is, just give it to God. Listen, God, I'm all in. God, take it all. All I have. Jesus, we thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Galatians 6 8 says, For those who sow to, to his flesh, that means that his, his sinful capacity, his worldliness, his disgraceful impulses will reap from the flesh ruin and destruction. But the one who sows to the Spirit will from the Spirit reap eternal life. I don't know who I'm talking to. But understand, you're going to have to draw the line. Lord, thank you. Why not give it all to him? You go back to the thing? Thank no, to Lord. the scripture. Look what he says here, man. You will always have the poor with me. That's it. You can help them anytime. But you will not always have me. Why do we don't see God now? Why don't we go all in for God now? Why don't I give everything to God now? Are you going to wait for everything else to happen and then be like, oh. And I know, man, many of you say, oh, I'm young. Young, 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 young. Mm -hmm. Are you going to wait 
when he's not here? But you will not always have me. God is telling you, man, stop thinking about time. You know what can happen. I don't know if you get it, man. You guys seem too serious, man. I'm sorry. <laughs> I love you guys. I know. First God. God is not always going to be here. One day he will pick up his church. And like Pastor said the other day, man, it's like, yo, you imagine me preaching, me worshiping, me doing all this, and one day I gotta step to that throne and be like, yo, get away from me. I never knew. I come to church, I worship God, I raise my hands, and then you end up in that trial for all those that rejected God. And God tells you, move away from me. I never knew you. But God, I used to preach your word downstairs with the youth. That's what you can do. I never knew you. You evil door. Look, there's still time, sir. There's still time. There's, I know you've been up here. I know you have committed. I know you have said it. There's still time. We can start over. It's all good. Jesus' grace is big enough. His mercy is anew every day. There's still time. But it's up to you. I told you, I'll drill it in your head all day long. It's up to you to make a real commitment, a real choice, to follow the true Christ, to separate yourself, mm -hmm. to not act like the world. That's crazy to me. Mm -hmm. I love you. Mm -hmm. Romans 14, 8 says, if we live, we live for the Lord. And if we die, we die for the Lord. So whatever, whether we live or die, we belong to the Lord. Now the question is, do you belong to the Lord? That's the question. Let me ask you this. And this is from TikTok. I say, God, send it to me. If you knew for a fact that Jesus was coming in two or three days, I want to ask you, and I'm going to open up the floor. What would you do? Karen, I'm sorry to take you first. What would you do if you knew Jesus was coming in three days? Say it to everybody. She's going to spread the word. Natalie, I was going to say that. I said, that's okay, so I don't care. But, um, I would probably be really excited. You'd be excited, good. Tell you? I think I'm scared for my family members. She'll be scared for her family members. Jake? Uh, not this Jake. He's good. <laughs> Oh, drop down to my knees. Oh, I guess we gotta be some doing some dropping. That's the truth. Anybody else? Anybody want to share? Three days. He's coming. Victoria. Are you here with us? What would you do if you knew Jesus was coming in three days? I'm looking for a specific answer and nobody's telling me. Say it again. Happy? Go ahead, Les. Ask for forgiveness. Danny, come on, you smile. Give me some. Um, I don't know, probably what Jonathan said. Get everything in back in order. Get everything in order. See, I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to do this to, to get with what's going on. This is not my intent. Ready? Oh, so if you knew in three days, he'll be number one. 
<laughs> it's been a confession that I didn't want to hear. I didn't want to hear. <laughs> Yo, if Jesus was coming in three days, if you knew for a fact, for a fact, for a fact give him all I have. Give him all I have. Uh, Nobody has said, I'm going to preach to the people. Nobody said, let me spread the word more. Nobody said, you know what I mean? We're worried. Jay said, bye. Jesus. <laughs> right? But all those are good answers. I, I wasn't trying to get, uh, you know, how do you, a confession out of you. I'm just trying to say that why don't you live that way now? Because there's either three days, three seconds, three minutes, 300 years. Why not live for Jesus like that now? Mm -hmm. Why not get myself in order? Why not go to my knees? Why not repent? Why get all my things straight? Why not talk to my family members? And listen, dealing with family members is hard. Mm -hmm. That's a very hard issue. Yeah. You know what I mean? I have a grandma that I love. Well, it's the only grandma I have. Well, I know her, I don't know, I don't know her. And she, she messes with the, with the cards and all that. Mm -hmm. But God, you know, have mercy on her. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> that I know. And it's gonna break my heart. But she's a she's a diehard Catholic. And I talk to her sometimes and she I get all that. And I'm yeah, I'm good. I love God too. But you can't take away Mary from me on that. Just so hard. And you know, she's losing it too. And it, and it hurts me. And she's repeating herself. And I'm like, God, is is it possible that in her ignorance you can still save her? She doesn't know how to read or write. Is it possible? Wow. It's so hard to deal with our family members. I don't know why I drift away. But it's the truth, you Lord. And you guys have a gift, man. You're here. You know the truth. Yes. But yet we waste time. Today I had a conversation at work with dude is like, yo, I'm lost. And the other dude was telling me that, you know, he wants to help me out and he gave me his card and it's a Jehovah's uh, Jehovah Witness card. I'm like, oh, God. I said, don't join the cult. And he's a Catholic. Now I'm a Catholic. But this Catholic, you know, people say I'm a Catholic, you never go to church. I said, you're a Catholic, let's just take that. Let's take that. Who is Jesus to you, I said. And both of them. You know what? Both of them couldn't answer me who Jesus was. Meanwhile, he told me that he did everything that had to do with kids, right? And he couldn't explain to me what Jesus was. But he did, under his breath, said, Savior. Right? And he couldn't say the Son of God, God, you know what I mean? Because I was just trying to get him to say, yo, the whole witness doesn't believe that Jesus is God. Mm -hmm. So we'll cut them off right now. <laughs> but I don't like that. I, mean, I don't know if you know the story. They knocked on my door. They erased me from the list. <laughs> <laughs> True story. The problem is that I was shirtless, tattooed, my hair was crazy. They caught me in my, you know, my sleep, my, my sleep in, and then oh, we want, we want to invite you to say that. Hold up. <laughs> I'm sorry, but we can't do that. We're Christians in this house, and uh, we can't. Uh, we're Christians too. I said, but yeah, but you're not going to heaven. So straight up, I got no shirt on. I'm looking all crazy. <laughs> I said, y'all yeah, not going to heaven. He said, oh, what do you mean? I said, because y'all chose already. Supposedly 144,000 only are going to heaven. And y'all picked that in 1905 or something. Oh, I said, oh, you be studying. I said, you know what? Let me put a shirt. Let me get the uh, coffee going. And then we'll talk. Now, we got to go. Yeah, we got to go. Guess what? I think they just walked this. And they started kicking This guy's nuts. Yeah. See, but we got to prepare ourselves. You got a gift, man. You have the, you have the truth. Don't give up on your family. Don't give up on your family. Don't give up on your friends. Don't give up on your family. Don't give up on your friends. Yo, and mercy yourself. Yeah. 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 Immerse yourself in this. Go all in on this. In God's word. Because when you hear things out there, you can be like, nah, that, that, that's funny. Nah. Jesus is not God? Nah, not my Jesus. My Jesus is God. The scripture says, you can easily use this while I was ready for that. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. God. But they changed it in their Bible, hey, God. Huh? Mm. There's only one God. Wow. 
Another scripture said, I wish I remembered them now, but I had them already. I've been waiting for them for weeks. <laughs> Another scripture says, there's three that give testimony in heaven. Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. And, and those three are what? One. You can't bamboozle me with another false teaching. That's because I immerse myself in the Word. That's what I made in my business. And there's a lot of bad stuff going on there. You have the truth. And all I want to tell you tonight is to go all in. To put it all out there. Whatever it is, your pain, your suffering, your struggles, we all have that. I thank God that just every day it gets better. And sometimes, take two steps back, it's just back. But then again, I go back up. Like I said on my little Ryan on Friday, you know what I mean? I start over. It's not a problem. We were talking about cursing the other day in the house, and then, you know, my, the way I used to speak, now, I told him, Tim, when's the last time you heard me curse? Because I want to be better. Amen. I want to separate myself. I want to do better. And I don't want to do better for you. I mean, to be honest, I want to be better for David. <coughs> I want to be better for God. Because uh, I don't want to be caught. Uh, to say, I got to get down on my knees, I got to get my things in order now. Nah, nah. I want to get them in order now. You have the truth. Go all in, go all you have. This lady, her act is to give it all. Mm -hmm. Yet people are like, yo, why is she doing that? Mm -hmm. That joint was expensive. We could have sold that and fed the poor. Now, who says this? If you go to the book of John, it says that Judas yes. was saying this. Are you going to listen to Judas? Mm -hmm. Judas was trying to just pocket money. He was a thief. The word says it. It says it right in John 2. And Jesus said, yo, leave her alone. So whatever you're going through, let Jesus fight your battle. Amen. Let Jesus fight for you. Wow. Let him stick up for you. See, because we're a little hot-headed sometimes. And I get it. Cause, oh, believe me. But I'm not that person anymore. Now I would rather just put my head down. And maybe, oh, you're weak. And you're soft. Call me with that. Mm. As long as I keep that title of son of God. Mm. It doesn't matter. That's not going to define me that I, you know, I mean, somebody comes at me, I got to get all crazy on them. He's like, man, it's hard sometimes. It's hard. But God gives me that strength. Praise God. Oh, Father God. Let God fight for you. Yes, hallelujah. Oh, Father. Thank you, Lord. De Deuteronomy 3.22 says, you must not fear that for the Lord your God himself fights for you. He will fight for you. See, we're worried about what people are thinking. The boys over here, they were mad. Yo, John is expensive. Don't worry about people over there. People are going to ridicule you. No doubt. People are going to ridicule you. 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 This is going to be worse. Amen. So come on. Mm. All the people that <coughs> let God fight for you. Yes. Let's. Yes. Thank you. Praise be to God. Look, very simple. Instead of worrying what people say, dedicate time to, to know God. See, because we, we waste a lot of time. Waste time on God. What God wants from you, and I'll finish. What time is that? Oh, yeah, we're good. What God wants from you, I close here. What God wants from you, what he wants from you, he provided a way for you. Whatever he wants, what, that thing that he wants more from you, he already provided it for you. He wants your love. He already provided that for you. Mm -hmm. And he demonstrated that in the cross. Amen. So me and you will not perish, but have everlasting life. Whatever you have, he, already, he gave it to you. I always like to say this. Take a breath of that. Just breathe. I want to hear it. He just gave you that. He can cut that off if he wants. Jesus, Psalms, Lord. Psalms 116.12. Why will I give the Lord a return for all his benefits towards me? How can I repay him for his precious blessings? You know how I want to repay God? Through my obedience, through my worship. And he spoke about what worship is. The act of serving God. Anything that you do for God, I want to worship him. That's how I want to pay him. It's not enough. But I still want to put it out there. I want to give him all I have. All I have. 
I'll break the alabaster jar. Now, I'm going to take you out here. I forgot it. It's because I don't write things down sometimes. But thank you, Spirit. The problem is, oh, I can't close it now. The problem is that we will walk in that room with the alabaster jar. And instead of cracking it open so they can't close it, that we have to use it all one time, we'll open it a little bit, a little bit. And we'll come with a measuring cup. We'll come with measuring spoons. For those that know that I'm talking about. And we'll just, a little dab. Just a little dab. Right? We're counting. Oh, man, this is 300 denarius. Just a little bit. A drop for the water to clean his feet. Nah. See, that's us. We won't give it all. So we take that example that she broke that jar and gave it all to God. Yes. Who yes. wants to give it all to God? Praise Amen. You, God. Who is willing to give it all to God? Amen. Only one amen. I'm, I'm right with one. It's all good. All I have, I want to give all I have because he's all I need. Amen. That's right. He is all I need. I'll close with this song. Lord, you alone are my portion and my cup. Oh, my God. You make my lot secure. Psalm 16, 5. Give all to God. That's, that's all you need. That's all you need. I love you guys. Praise the Lord. Praise be to God. Praise God, brothers. How many did God speak to today? Amen. Amen.